for for businesses and even even startups, even large enterprise, is autonomous or becoming autonomous um, becoming increasingly important? Will you be left behind if you're not? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean, it's cheaper and faster to run with or, or automation and AI by your side. I hope, I like to think that as a society, we'll find a way for people to not lose jobs in the wrong, long run. Um, but I think that, you know, living in a capitalist world, the capitalist world, those efficiency gains and those sort yeah. of productivity gains are hard to ignore. The startup culture as well. Right? Yeah. It, but I think it, that the companies that are going to succeed the most are not the people who throw out their, you know, <laughs> human employees in mm. favor of an AI workforce. I think it's, realistically going to be the people who uh upskill and train their teams uh to the best of their abilities on the possibilities of ai and instead of being able to do the same with less they do more with the same <laughs> how, how do you think that differs um for large enterprise how, how do they leverage obviously that probably be more data centric right how can they autonomize yeah. How, how, how yeah i think that one of the things that you know we don't talk enough about in uh the world of of enterprise experiences and web development and app development is uh cdps and how to use mm. data so customer data platforms are really central to a lot of the largest enterprises that we all know love and hate um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, they're the driving force behind a lot of the personalization and unique experiences that we get to, uh, access from those sorts of large brands. But, uh, yeah, to your point, like AI is, is here now. And so that gives a lot more people, it really democratizes the ability to pass that data and get insights from that data. One of the things we're working with crowd favorite with was actually, we we're building this thing called control center, right? Where large enterprises can have multiple data streams that pull all into one place. Right, and from this, if it's from some marketing, from sales, a C suite, et cetera, et cetera, they can put all these different data streams in and to get a customized view of the data they want and what they uh, what they value, right? So maybe that data, even if it isn't external sometimes, even if it's for internal to identify mm -hmm. where things dropping off. Yeah, having a chat dialogue, you can mm -hmm. ask you, where do I find this? What was this last month? How does last month track against it's, this month? Once in terms again, of it's a shortcut. This is the thing is um, there's a lot of insight and knowledge and complexity that has been hidden behind <laughs> closed walls. And by that, I mean, you know, economics or finance degrees or, or statistics degrees um, and the access to right. natural language ways of understanding and passing that is really bringing down the, the barrier of entry. Right. And if it makes it more accessible for everyone in large enterprise, even in startup. Then the competition grows. What, the, competition, the competition grows, but allows everyone on every level, if it's attainable, to make informed decisions across the business quicker, mm -hmm. to be dismissive of some and more definitive on others, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, everything you're doing is backed up by real yes, results, yeah, real exactly. data. And that that's what the largest, most successful companies are doing. That's what they've been doing for the last 10 to 15 years is is basing every one of their ideas. But it... But once again, it's just democratization of, of a technology. And that's like, you know, that's the really beautiful thing about uh, a lot of these developments is uh, the power that it gives smaller businesses to achieve more. And that comes into like further opportunities, even with Provenir, right? If we're talking about how that autonomously works, how we shouldn't have to think about it, it should be part of that process, right? Yeah, Surely giving, they... you know, <laughs> VFX houses that are already <laughs> slammed with tight deadlines, as we know a couple already, yep. um, you know, the opportunity to protect their ownership of, of, of stuff that they create, you know, in a way that they haven't had before. Mm. I mean, and also, you know, th those houses, they're working with, you know, major third-party clients who, you know, the, the VFX houses most of the time don't even own any of the mm -hmm. IP. So the security measures, the NDAs they have to work with, the air gaps, you know, computers, all those sorts of things, it lends itself to, you know, having that autonomous agent built inside of their workflows, mm -hmm. documenting the entire process, and then them to have that, you know, as insurance, but also to have it to share with those third parties to show the entire design development process mm -hmm. if there is any sort of questions, if there needs to be any changes in it. Uh, if they want to just make sure that, you know, they're getting value for money, mm -hmm. um, it, it ends up being a, you know, a product that enhances the security for both parties on both ends. So they know that they're getting a fair deal within it. So I think that's a really exciting thing for, you know, the, this autonomous addition that we're building into it. Um, and I also think that it's one of those things where, you know, if you have that data of how you created something that then you can watch back, mm -hmm. it's oh. going to give you 
areas where you can go, I'm having a you know a tough oh, point an here. insight into the workflow that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Exactly. Yeah. And if you have designers who are working with this mm. uh, to figure out you know where you can become more efficient, or even things like, why are we purchasing this software? They probably need an autonomous agent on top of it. We've only actually opened up this software six times. So then you know where yeah. you can cut those efficient, those those extraneous you know expenditures out of those budgets going forward mm -hmm. yeah and i think also it'd be really interesting to think about how that could affect education right if there's more documentation of process i think it'd be easier to identify uh where mistakes were made where decisions mm -hmm. were made where you were to tangent into certain areas right and therefore when um course leaders such as yourself as well adam could go back and have these insights over time when you when you then speak about the creative process it could influence it in a way to, for people i know people already do encourage mistakes mm. but here's a it's hard to go here's a proof of concept of like how a mistake yeah. can really lead to i mean realistically like, there just hasn't been a thing uh that sticks with you through the creative process like mm. prominent for a while and so it's an interesting new opportunity especially in a digital age where so much is trackable where we can hopefully surface insights to uh users and organizations who um who, who want to understand that creative process better uh, it's an interesting space so something weird i i found was linkedin's use use of of ai oh it's not just linkedin it's oh, facebook mm, as well now. okay but from what i've seen <laughs> they want you to post with ai comment with ai summarize mm -hmm. profiles with ai and whatever right so in theory f fake Bunch posts fake interactions, interactions fake questions. AIs, so yeah. And if everything's becoming autonomous I mean, and generated with AI, how do we distinguish between real and not? To be fair, they've pretty much faked the whole time, though. I <laughs> Instagram in a while, and, uh, pretty bad. Maybe fake, they might yeah. get better with AI. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's, it's a strange space uh, to see at this moment. And I mean, as someone who is also works you know, in education, um, one of the things I think is, is an interesting uh, uh, development is, you know, there's the group of students who are being homeschooled and they have um, like AI agents who are teaching them like two, three hours a day. Uh, and it's, you know, there's, there's these reports that, you know, they're, they're doing really mm -hmm. well and it, it's, it's really giving you, um, giving them, you know, confidence in these sorts of things. I think that there, there's some attribution there that would be mm -hmm. really interesting. Uh, you know, if you're building profiles like that, yeah. if there's profiles like that on, instagram that you know you follow and that Fair. would learn ta ones yeah. yeah but then it's it's sort of like you're kind of cannibalizing your own audience because you go onto youtube to you know be an instructor so of yeah, talking about wanted... so i mean yeah. it's a strange it's an odd one because then it's like okay well if i guess at the end of the day the idea mm -hmm. is that you so, sell um ads get the eyeball so if you get more than three eye then it makes sense but I do think that with these things, there's this really big ramp up, um, and then there's a tipping point, and then either people push away from it or yeah. it it evolves well, into something that, a little like, bit different, curve, right? Of the adoption of something, yeah, where it yeah. goes like to the peak and then troughs off, and then you know goes up to where it should be, basically. And I think that we could be at that peak uh, with AI, where it's maybe getting a little silly <laughs> in some places, yeah. And then I think it will drop off as that silliness goes away, and mm. then you know I think that the sort of long term use cases will settle in a bit more. Which which is what I think why you have the AI agents now. I think mm. that's an actual real. Mm. Uh, long-term use case. I mean, it's something that I talk to Jess all the time. I say, yeah. you know, it's the worst part of my, my job, moving that data from that Excel sheet into that Excel sheet. <laughs> I don't want to do that. That's yeah. crazy. And you don't need to do it. And anymore. I don't need to do it. Exactly. Yeah. I, I would be better used mm. talking to the students and working through their ideas. Mm. That's the actual reason why mm -hmm. you want to be there. So I think we, like you said, I do think we're hitting that point mm. I mean, because what, like a year ago, everyone was losing their minds over, you know, getting 10 free AI generated images for mm -hmm. Instagram. Then everyone went, well, these are all slobs. Yeah, so exactly. that's the end of that. Yeah. But, you know, once again, coming coming back to that, I think um, real human time will become more valuable in the long run. People well, who can really apply their, their mind to something, their emotions to something. We have discussions with Alex, our head of development with is, um, <clears throat> can you discount uh emotion if it's logical and logic right can logic discount emotion and he was definitely out for, for, for yes it's either right or it's wrong <laughs> right when but most people 90 odd percent of people 
are emotional, right? So you can't discount emotion mm -hmm. or emotions, right? Um, and Once again, uh, this is our lead developer. Yeah, very yeah, right. And Sorry, is this Alex? Yes, yeah, it's yeah, Alex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, and um, I don't want to misquote him in, in, in any way, but um, another gentleman that I'm, I'm quite a fan of is Rory Sutherland, right? And he, he, he talks about if everything was completely logical, therefore it would end up being predictable, mm. right? And therefore it's predictable, it becomes hackable. For example, I think the example he gave, again, I may get this wrong, was if um, driving was completely all automated, right? As, as, as it's kind of looking to where to go, right? Mm -hmm. um, if everyone knew all the cars were all simultaneously kind of driving here, mm -hmm. there, it stops at green light, uh, stops at red lights, goes at green lights. But if obviously anything was to jump in the way of it, the car would immediately stop. Well, jaywalking would be a huge problem, wouldn't it? Because mm. everyone's going to know, I'll just jump in front of the car's going to yeah, stop. Exactly. It's not very great for the 80 year old grandma who's in the passenger seat who just nearly <laughs> hit the dashboard, <laughs> right? But again, that, that's not my thing. That's Rory Sutherland's, but it's a really good example of um, accounting um, emotion. Um, and I think he called it psy psychological. So it's that, oh, that, psychological, that, that yeah. perceived value mm. is the same as. Yeah, real value. It is real value. Real value right? So I think emotion shouldn't be discounted, even if it was to deemed to be illogical i think uh we live in a world that's pretty logic heavy and that's really good for some people there's a lot of people who do well with that maybe 10 20 30 percent of the world does really well with that um but uh, it would be nice if humans could focus on doing the human things in the future the interpersonal things the communication things the emotion things and less of the spreadsheet things so mm. What, what defines a human? The soft skills type stuff. Soft skills. You've got a good point here. Uh, I saw a post a couple of days ago um, talking about someone saying, oh, you know, well, what if AI takes a lot of your, a lot of these jobs away or, or it makes it so that you don't have to do this kind of work. What are you going to do with your time? Mm. And then they put up four different charts of how much time we spend with our friends mm -hmm. from like, you know, five years old until 80. And there's, you know, four hours yeah. And then by the time you hit about 18, it goes to like one hour, maybe a week yeah. for the rest of your life. And yeah. it's just straight down. Mm. Kids, exactly the same. You mm. have kids, you spend a ton of time with them till they're 18. And then suddenly straight down to like one hour for the rest of your life. Mm. And That's not what to you get would do. To what else um, is, you know, the human condition about other than spending time with people and making connections. That's but, but yeah, but if it, if it <laughs> frees know? up time to do that, then okay, yeah. fine. You know? Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that.